Hi, my name's Kevin and welcome to another video. In the short clips you've just seen, those were some of the operations on uh, making this here, which is going to be an end mill cutter grinder uh, for sharpening end mills and that. Um, I've decided to build one myself rather than buy one because uh, they're not really, you know, they're not really that cheap. And for how often I'm going to use one, you know, I just couldn't justify spending that sort of money. So I had some uh, metal and materials and I thought, oh, you know, I'll, I'll make my own. So anyway, here it is. Um, I've got it mocked up just on a piece of timber at the moment, um, just to make sure it's all going to work right and how I want it to work. And then once I've, I'm happy with that, I'll then uh, mount it to, to some sort of metal base, you know, for keeping it rigid and accurate. But um, even as, as it stands at the moment, it's pretty good. Um, I've been sharpening messing around with some end mills and that and um, obviously you'll see those in the later videos and you know it's come out really well and it does do a good job so the next um, series of videos um, I don't know how many there'll be in the series yet but um, I'll show you know the various parts being made and uh, machined and that so anyway we'll start and we'll we'll have a look at some of those videos well, before I start showing you those videos, I just thought I'd give you a close-up of the machine itself. So here we are. This is the main spinning part of the machine, which will hold the um, end mills in. We're, um, we're going to hold them in using an ER32 collet chuck, and so I can then, you know, I can obviously put in different size end mills from small right up to you know large sizes. Like this is a 20 mil in here at the moment. This will. Spin this will rotate that way so we can get our different degrees of cut on the cutter itself so we can do like the primary cuts and the secondary cuts and then it's all mounted on an X and Y table so that's so we can move those cutting edges into the wheel and um, you know for accurate grinds and that and each of these X and Y axes has got graduations on the dial so we can do the accurate cuts also the motor itself all this side of it is just a bench grind, you know, just a cheap bench grinder. Um, I normally have polishing uh, buffing wheels on here to polish, you know, like brass and that sort of thing. But at the moment, it's just got a grinding cup on there. At the back here, we've got a lathe milling attachment, which will allow me to wind the grinding wheel up and down this way. And also on the mount here, that will get allow me to rotate that way if I want to do you know different things and different sort of cutters and that because not not every cutter is the same um, they have different you know different tooth profiles and various things and then back to the main setup itself on here we have a finger which is um, just a point and when we're doing the flutes when we're actually cutting the flutes I'll show you that um, we just undo this here move that out so when we're actually flute grinding which is this part here when we're putting you know re um, sharpening the edge of those we can put this finger up and I'll just quickly set up to give you an idea of how that works so the finger itself which you can see here will actually sit on the back side of the cutter on the rear flute and that will allow us to spin this flute on the front here, you can see that one there, that will then stay in line with the cutting wheel. So we can re-grind that flute. And it's just we'll not get out of the way. On the cutting edge here, we have a primary and a secondary cut as well. So um, and obviously with the different settings and that which we can get with this machine, I'll be able to uh, re-grind those as well. I'll just bring you in closer and just show you some of the other parts on that. So here we've got a mechanism on the back here, which we can rotate every 90 degrees. So we've got a four fluted cutter in there at the moment. So we can rotate each 90 degrees for each point on the cutter. And that will allow us to, you know, obviously accurately cut each tip of the cutter. So that just keeps rotating like that. And then we obviously move it in and out to, on the cutting wheel itself to, um, you know, sharpen the points and that. And it's got a piece of spring steel in here, which um, is what traps it every 90, as you can see there. And then this is our up and down movement if we want to, um, you know, give us our various degrees of cut. 
Then if I just move this out of the way here, let me just do this back up. And we'll just move this out of the way. So the spindle itself actually runs, this is all aluminium, and the spindle runs in some brass bushes. And again, you'll see, excuse me, you'll see those being machined and that through the various videos. So that then allows us to move this in and out. Then we've got the motor mount itself. So we just got a piece of aluminium on here, just a back plate. And then we've got, we can rotate that slightly. And then we've got the, the lathe milling attachment on there and just bolt it down. So anyway, that's the close up of that done. So we'll start the videos and then you can see the processes for each part of you know, what I've made. The first job was to start the aluminium frame of the, um, you know, what was going to hold the spindle. So here I'm just trying to get it as level as possible, but it just wasn't very square. So I had to end up fly cutting it square. And this is the slot for the second part, which is going to hold the back bearing. I wanted this to be quite a tight fit because obviously it had to be nice and square with no movement. And then drilling the central hole, which was what the shaft was going to run in. So the biggest drill I had for this was a 20 mil, And then I'll bore the rest out on the lathe. So this is the start of the uh, two bearings, which will carry the spindle. So the biggest drill I had for this was 20 mil. So I had to bore the rest out with a bore, bore and bar. So I'm just setting this up to centre height. And I wanted to get this sort of quite close to the spindle size of the, um, you know, of the main mechanism. But I didn't want to make it exact because I was going to um, do that in the line boring on the lathe. And then I know that, you know, that's going to be accurate then. Because you, you want the tight, a very tight fit. You don't want it loose, you know, otherwise you're going to get movement. And when you try and grind your cutters, you're going to have steps if, if there's any movement, you know, any slop. So I'm just parting off the first bearing. And then parting off the second bearing. The bearings I made slightly oversize um, to what I was going to be using in the in the support, you know, in the aluminium support. And then I was going to do a shrink fit. So you'll see in a minute that I heated this up with a hot air gun and then I put the two bearings in the freezer to cool them down and you'll see in a minute here we are so we're heating this up with a hot air gun which is obviously the aluminium will expand and the brass will shrink well to a certain degree anyway and then those will just you know just I give that a tap in and then obviously when everything cools down that will hold that in place and here we are now we're now line boring the two brass bushes so although you don't see that on the video, I have actually, um, I did use measurement equipment to measure these to get them exact. That's what the square is sitting at the back there for, I was measuring off the square. Well that's the first video finished, so please like and subscribe and we'll see you in the next video.